We're going to try and straighten out some of this coat because it was from yesterday. Because you always want to groom on a freshly bathed. This is a, this is a conditioning spray. Um, it's made up of coconut oil, avocado oil, macadamia oil, keratin, B7. Okay, just so I can try and fluff her out. Because never in a million years would this dog be allowed to leave my salon looking this curly. Okay. Girl. Yeah, I want to comb it upward so it'll stand up. Try and stretch it. And I always use the widest part of my comb. So, yeah, and it's not getting hung up because her coat is so thick. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you on the double coated breeds, you'll ruin their coat by clipping them down. And I have a I have a lot of clients that like their dog's coat clipped down, and I try and talk them out of it. I tell them the the dangers of it, and that it will ruin their coat. But if they still insist on it, I do it. Yeah. For what? Because, well, because first of all, you're exposing all of that coat or all of that to the to the skin because you're going to do a seven blade, let's say. Now it's more susceptible to insect bites, sunburn, and you are going to ruin that coat. It may not be the first groom. It may not be the 30th groom, but it will ruin their coat because a double coated breed is a fur-bearing dog. It's not a hair-bearing dog. This is a hair-bearing dog. This dog's coat will grow continuously. Yes. Thank you. This is an apricot standard poodle. And it, you know, people think that by shaving their, their dogs like that in the summer is going to keep them cooler. But what I, what, I, what I say to them is, in the summer, do you pull all the insulation out of your house? No, you keep it in there to keep the cool air in. It's the same thing. If you think of people as well in the Middle East, they dress in layers to stay cool. They need that to stay cool. And then they, people say, well, all they do is pant. That's how they sweat. Right. But like I said, if they still insist on that after that, then yes, I do do it. Because I don't want them to go to a groomer that thinks nothing of taking a 10 or a 15 blade and shaving these double-coated breeds down. 
You know, I know a lot of people would say, well, I just refuse to do them. I, to me, then you're, you're, you're actually then telling another groomer it's okay to shave with a 10 or a 15. I'm sorry? Yeah. All right, so now we got her body as straight as we're gonna get it without re-wetting her down and redoing her. Even though she's got all these funky lines in her from where they were putting her into an English saddle trim, I don't want to cut, it's an English, it's called an English saddle trim which is a proper poodle cut. Oh, they she do would that. have the yeah. bracelets. She would have a line yeah, here, here, and a kidney patch. The reason this cut was so popular years and years ago to be shown in and to hunt in is because then all of the joints were covered when they went into the water. So they weren't you know, being affected by the ice cold water. which is still some of the purpose for the Continental. Yes, they are a bird water dog. So they have web feet? Mm-hmm. They have wild webbing in between their piggies. Okay. So I think I'm just going to do a puppy trim on her. As soon as I find out where. Mm-hmm. We're just going to do leave her a little bit thank you a little bit fuller in the body or a little shorter in the body fuller in the legs we're going to pretend the hair is there all right okay and i'm going to use the tan snap on comb or the number one And I want to leave, it, leave a neckline on her, so I'm going to start a little bit behind the withers here. Okay, take all of her top line down. A tan leaves, I don't know what it leaves, let's see, half inch. Yep, a half inch. After I do her top line, I'm going to come to the front, right by the ear, and I'm going to come down the side, set in her shoulder, and I'll blend that right down by the front leg. I'll come to the front. I'm going to come right from my clipper line to the breastbone and the point of shoulder. I need to leave a little bit of a chest on these guys. Okay, their front legs should kind of be set underneath them. They don't get a terrier front where they are flat in the front. Let me come around this way, otherwise I'm gonna Okay, well, it's okay. This ear is kind of bugging her. Again, I'm gonna right to that point of shoulder. I have a ten blade that's underneath the snap-on comb. Now I want to set in a waistline on her. This would be so nice if we could do this for ourselves. But I want to find where her last rib is, and this is where her, her back leg is. And I just want to come straight down from there. 
okay, right where her last rib is. So I can set in where that waistline is. I'm gonna blend this down in a little bit here. But I'm gonna switch blades in a second. Okay, I'm gonna set in her rear angulation. And when I set in the rear angulation, I want her to try and stand as square as she possibly can. Okay, a lot of dogs are not perfectly built, so you have to work with what they have. Okay, so I'm gonna find her pin bone, which is right here, that bone underneath the tail there. And I'm gonna start underneath it, and I'm just gonna go to the bend in her leg. Okay. And I want to kind of wrap that around the front just a little bit so that if I'm looking at her from the front and I'm coming to the rear, I can see that she has rear angulation. But I don't want to take all of this off with the one. I want to... Take off some on the inside. What I do to the outside, I have to do to the inside. Okay. Now a poodle should have a nice spring of rib. Okay, I don't want to take her rib cage so short that she looks like what they call slab-sided, like a greyhound. Okay, so I want to show that she has a little bit of ribs. So now I'm going to take my zero comb and I'm just going to come straight down off the rib cage. And I'm going to roll this upward just a little bit so I can come straight down. Okay, and I'm going to take off the top medius part of this thigh as well. And I can take off of there and do the same thing to the other side. my rib cage up come straight down okay now everything else is going to be scissor Let's grab some scissors. Um, here they are. Oops. So I need my straights, pair of curves. And you always want some type of finishing spray. This is my own product. It's called Magic Mist. But you can use any type of, even just a little bit of water. Whenever you're scissoring or brushing and combing, you always want to mist your coat first, comb, and then scissor. And the reason why is because when you use a finishing spray, it's going to help lift up your coat, but hair that you've already scissored is going to pull back and it's going to come out real nice. So it actually helps improve your scissor work. Again, we're going to raise her up. OK, 
because I want her to stand as tall as she can and as square as she can. So let's move some stuff here. So that way she's not knocking stuff all over the place. First things first, I'm going to neaten up anything that hangs over her tail that I clipped so that it helps me set in that V a little bit nicer. And now I'm going to come right on my top line and give her a nice level top line, maybe. We're gonna have to steal a pair of Sue's scissors because I thought I'd be funny and buy myself a left-handed pair of shears being a lefty. <laughs> okay. So we'll just steal a pair of Sue's. If you're a lefties, don't do this to your right-handed groomers. They'll hate you. Hey, which ones are your old pairs? All she has are new pairs. Hey, Sue, 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 do you have an old pair of shears or did you turn them all in? I turned them all in. All right, lefties aren't working in my hands. No, you want to use my lighties? Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, that's oh. why. Okay. Okay. Because I've used right-handed shears all of my grooming life, I have a habit of pushing with my thumb rather than pulling. So I grind my shears. But if I, if I let you use these, aren't you going to ruin my edge? No. She's lying to me. Yes. That's why never let a lefty borrow your shears. I'll go, say, you can go tell them that it doesn't work. They don't work. Okay. Okay, so now I can neaten up my top line. So I have a nice level top line. Good girl. So after you take a few swipes with your scissor, Again, you're going to want to mist your coat. Comb it all up. See what else you need to fix. Oh, I did it again. I, I'll have to exchange those. And I want to bring it right up to where my clipper line is. This dog's coat is like as thick as a woolly lamb. And that's unusual for a red. A very unusual for a red. Reds usually their coat are thin and wimpy and... No, this is, um, a, it's a finishing spray. Um, it's made up of coconut oil, macadamia oil, avocado oil, keratin, B6. Do you have it here? Yeah, yes, I do. I brought a couple of bottles with me to sell. How much is it? 20. And a little goes a long way. Okay, so after I neaten up my top line, what I'm going to do is just block her in first. I'm not going to fully scissor everything and bring it together. My sister's a lefty and she's been looking for left and the scissors. scissors do you this, these ones, these are the lefties. Those, they're made by Kenshi and they're called Love. They're a real nice shear. I'm a lefty but I have always used right-handed shears. You're not gonna be able to switch over. You do the same thing I do. You, we grind our hand which even normal everyday shears, 
I have to have my shears sharpened probably once every two to three months because I, I'm so mean to them. I'm not nice to my scissors. No, I can't trim. I can all. I use right-handed shears in my left hand. Okay, okay like. Okay, now, see, they won't. They don't cut for me. Okay, I thought I would try again. Okay, so now from my pin bone down to that bend, I want to neaten that up. That's all I learned on was right-handed shears. Okay, so I have this. See, and you can see a nice bend in the leg. And you don't want to overdo it. The nice thing is, is you can cover up flaws when you have hair, which is our job. We're magicians. That's right, until we touch it and comb it. But nothing that a can of hairspray can't fix. No. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, from that bend in my pin bone to that bend in my leg, And right now, I'm not real concerned about my scissor work. All I want to do is get my line set in. Good girl. Okay, I'm going to come to the front. Comb all this up. I'm going to neaten up first. Started out with this bag. My clipper line for my throat. I have some on everything. Here's that step. That is serum. And from my clipper line to my breastbone, I want to trim that straight across. because my chest does not start until my breastbone. A lot of groomers nowadays are making it way up here and bringing it down. That means that that dog's breastbone is all the way up here. It's not, their breastbone is here. That is where their chest belongs. And I know a lot of the European styles, they're going for more of this bigger chest. But if you really look at them, they're off balance they're gonna tip forward because they have so much coat in the front. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this straight across to my point of shoulder. Okay, I'm gonna neaten this up 